So after I uploaded my video comparing the Canon M6 Mark II with the Sony a6400, I got a lot of questions asking how the image stabilization compares between the two camera systems. And so that's what we're here to answer today. I've got this test rig, um, so both of these cameras will be locked together. We're going to take it outside. We're going to walk it through a couple of different stabilization tests. Now, as background, neither one of these cameras have um, IBIS or in-body image stabilization, where the actual sensor sort of moves around in order to compensate for any shake. However, the Canon has some built-in digital image stabilization, and what that basically does is it crops in a little bit and then moves the, the recording frame around in order to compensate for any shake in the camera. And there's two different levels of image stabilization. Uh, there's sort of a regular level, which will give you a little bit of a crop, and then there's an enhanced level on the Canon that'll give you a much further crop. And that enhanced level can only be used when you're in the movie mode. And in my tests, it doesn't seem like there's any, um, you know, image quality deg degradation, but you do get more of a crop. Now, as for the lenses we'll be using for this test, they both have optical image stabilization built into the lens. So really what we're getting here is sort of a best case scenario in the stabilization between these two cameras. On the Canon, we're gonna have the EFM 11 to 22 millimeter F4 to F5.6. Uh, and then on the Sony, it is the E-mount uh, 10 to 18 f4 constant aperture lens. As for the settings we're going to be using, both cameras are going to be shooting 4K at 30 frames per second in a 1 60th of a second shutter speed. And we're using that 30 frames per second because as of this filming, the Canon cannot shoot in 24 frames per second. And yeah, so let's go ahead and take this outside and see how these two compare. So just to start out, I've got the M6 Mark II's digital image stabilization completely disabled. Um, that way we can get a baseline and we can see how these two cameras perform with just the optical image stabilization that's built into the lens. So let's go ahead and get to the test. Here we are with just the optical image stabilization of both lenses, no in-body image stabilization in either camera. Both of these cameras, 1 60th of a second shutter speed set to f7.1, ISO locked in at 100. Just to give you a sense of the exposure. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on the digital image stabilization that is in the Canon M6 Mark II. All right, so now we have the regular image stabilization on the M6 Mark II. Um, it, there is an enhanced level, which we'll look at in a second, but this is what it looks like with just the regular digital image stabilization. Okay, so now let's switch the Canon to the enhanced image stabilization. It's gonna crop in a little bit more, but let's see how that performs. All right, now we're on the enhanced digital image stabilization on the Canon. You can see how much more cropped in we are. We're still at 11 millimeters on the, on the focal length on the 11 to 22 millimeter lens, but we're probably a lot closer to like 24 millimeter full frame equivalent at this point because of the extra crop from the digital image stabilization and the 1.6 times crop from the APS-C sensor.
So we're back inside and after reviewing the footage, you know, you really can see that the digital image stabilization in the M6 Mark II is really impressive. Now, again, this is sort of a best case scenario for both camera systems. They both have optical image stabilization in the lenses and they're both shooting at a wide angle, which tends to be a little bit easier to stabilize um, than a telephoto. But even though the M6 Mark II's digital image stabilization is quite impressive, you know, I do wonder how does it compare to the A6400 if you run it through some stabilization in post? And of course, the M6 Mark II adds that crop in order to take advantage of the stabilization. And if you're stabilizing in post in something like Final Cut or Adobe Premiere, then it's gonna crop in on your A6400 footage as well. So I wanted to find out, so I did exactly that. I took one of the more impressive comparisons where the M6 Mark II really shined with its digital image stabilization against just the optical image stabilization in the A6400. And I ran the A6400's footage through Final Cut's uh, stabilization. I just used the default settings because I'm not a stabilization wizard at all. I really don't know, you know what the best settings would be. So I figured we'll just use the defaults and, and use that as a baseline. And if you look at the two images uh, side by side with the post-processing stabilization applied on the A6400, it's really impressive. I mean, now they're sort of indistinguishable. You can see that it did add a little bit of an extra crop on the A6400, and you can see how much better it looks than the original when it's compared to itself. Now, in theory, the stabilization done in camera on the M6 Mark II should actually be better than the stabilization done in post on the A6400 footage. And that's because the stabilization done in camera takes advantage of the gyroscopes that are built into the M6 Mark II. So as the M6 Mark II is sort of moving in space and rolling, the gyroscopes are reading that data and adjusting the image accordingly. So because of that, I would imagine there's a lot of shot or, or a lot of types of shots where the a6400 stabilization actually wouldn't look as good in post um you know low light shots or like really fast moving shots or anything where that post processing stabilization can't really sort out what it's supposed to be holding still in the image whereas on the m6 mark ii because it has the ability to read those gyroscope settings um I think it would do a better job in some cases but for just like you know typical b-roll type stuff probably they end up being about the same. Now, before we go, I mentioned that the M6 Mark II has some gyroscopes or accelerometers that sort of track how the camera's moving through space. And you can actually prove that using a technique that I saw on uh, Steve Mold's uh, YouTube channel where he tested the digital image stabilization in a Google Pixel phone. When doing this experiment, I wanna uh, take off this image stabilized 11 to 22 millimeter lens and replace it with the EFM 32 millimeter uh, because that's unstabilized. I don't want any of the image stabilization, the optical image stabilization inside the lens in order to bias the results of our test. So from here with the unstabilized 32 millimeter lens in place, the experiment is quite simple. It can be broken down basically into three steps. Step one, you cut a hole in the box. Step two, you stick your M6 in the box. And then step three, you add some stickers to the far side of the box. Because the side of the box that the lens is pointed through is locked into the same plane as the far side of the box with the stickers applied, if I have digital image stabilization turned off and I move the box around like this, the M6 Mark II will think that it's viewing a stable image. And let me just prove that by holding this camera real tight, making sure that it doesn't jostle around. And yeah, I'm moving it around right now and the image is stable. Now, let's turn on the digital image stabilization and see how that changes. Okay, now we have the digital image stabilization turned on. And as you can see, as we move it around, you know, pan it back and forth, you know, up and down, things like that. It's bouncing around all over the place. Even though it's locked into the same reference plane as the other side of the box, the digital image stabilization sensors and accelerometers think that the camera is moving through space and it's trying to, you know, adjust the image accordingly. So hope you found this video interesting. Leave some comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Definitely love reading all of the comments that you guys are leaving on these videos. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. I've got a couple more ideas for videos like this in the future. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.